Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And good morning, LIC. From wherever you are joining us from, you are welcome to this morning's service. It is a praise service. So we are here to give God thanks, to worship and adore him. I'd like to read from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he have founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Who seek your face, O God of Jacob? Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord almighty he is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. This morning, the theme for our service is dwell in the presence of the Lord and is taken from Psalm 27. I'd like to invite us as we quiet our hearts before the Lord in preparation for this service. Shall we pray? You want to bring yourself before the Lord if there's anything that is on your heart, any burden that is weighing you down, every thought that is a distraction, you want to bring it under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ Jesus, the anointed one. So bring your thoughts, bring your heart before the Lord. Quieten your heart from all distractions and all worries and troubles this morning. If there's any sin that you need to confess before the Lord, please do so. Our reading says that he who has a clean heart clean hands may stand in the presence of the Lord, may ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in his holy place. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, is holy. So at church, in our homes, wherever we find ourselves this morning, it is holy ground. So let's ask the Lord to cleanse us and renew our minds and our spirits as we come to this service. And as we come, as our theme says, dwell in the presence of the Lord, we want to pray that in this service, and not just in this service, but the rest of our days, that we will live under the shadow of the Almighty, we will dwell in the presence of the Lord. Let's pray that the theme will be real to us, and that as we listen to the songs, as we listen to the exhortation, the Lord himself will speak to us. The Lord will reorient our minds. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I 
wanna be where you Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are good. We thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning. We thank you that where two or three come together in your name, whether in a location or wherever we may find ourselves, you are there in the midst of them. So this morning, as we come into your presence, as we come to this service, may your presence fill our hearts, fill our homes. You are spirit and your worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. It is not in a location. So wherever we find ourselves this morning, Lord, come and take authority. Come and take control in the name of Jesus. We come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to celebrate your name, to declare what you have done, to worship you for who you are. And so we pray that you will take control over this service. Let everything that we do be done to the praise and glory of your name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to enter into a time of thanksgiving. This is a praise service. We want to recount the things that God has done for us. It has not been easy the last month, two, three months, but we want to thank God because he is faithful. He has never changed. He has been good to us. The Bible says that we should give him thanks because this is the will of the Lord for us in Christ Jesus. So we want to come with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let each one of us, wherever we are, thank God for who he has been to us. Let's thank him for healing. Let's thank him for protection. Let's thank him for his provision. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord for have seen tough times but we come to you with thanksgiving because we acknowledge that you are good and your mercies endure forever though
though the times may be difficult, Lord, we thank you that you are not surprised at what is going on and that you are in control of your world. So we can rest in you and celebrate who you are and celebrate your goodness and celebrate your love in spite of all that may be going around us. Lord, this morning, take our worship take our praise let it rise up like a sweet smelling incense to you as we sing and as we worship lord we thank you that you are the god who fights our battles your word says that he who sacrifices thanks offering honors me and prepares the way that i might show him my salvation so we pray that for every heart in this service lift our hearts so that we can give you all the praise and the worship that is due your name we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. I read from our text, Psalm 27, 1 to 3. And after this, I will invite the choir to lead us as we sing, The Lord is my salvation. Psalm 27, 1 to 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. Amen. Amen. The choir will lead us. of God has reached for me and pulled me from the raging sea and I am safe on this solid ground the Lord is my salvation the darkness falls His strength will help me scale the wall I'll see the dawn of a rising sun The Lord is my salvation Who is like you, Lord? Yeah. 
salvation. Giving us your son, glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, and glory be to God the Spirit, the Lord is. into a time of worship and adoration I'd like to invite you to make this a personal time of communion with the Lord blessing him for his faithfulness and his goodness the Lord has been good to us and he deserves our worship this morning he's watched over us and we're here today we're alive he has seen us through we give him all the glory. He's worthy. He's worthy.
the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Oh, hallelujah.
27, 4 to 6. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. 
then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Amen. just 10 minutes to give an exhortation on our theme, dwelling in the house of the Lord. Can you hear me all right? Okay, good, good. So we chose for our theme, 
dwell in the presence of the Lord, which is uh, Psalm 27. And um, I am going to focus on just verse 1 and verse 4, or rather verse 1 to 4. And it's, it's all been read, but I will just read a portion of it and then speak to it. Um, hopefully, I will be done within the next five to ten minutes. Before I do that, I just want to remark that the Psalms are often a place to go when one is feeling all sorts of things. You know, when you're feeling afraid, when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling praiseful, or when you're feeling worshipful, it's a, a great place to go. And um, you will likely find all sorts of expressions that are even better put than the way you yourself would express them. And Psalm 27 does not disappoint in this regard. Verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, scholars have estimated when this psalm was written, and some suggest that it was written around the time when Doeg the Edomite went to betray David to King Saul. Um, you find this in First Samuel chapter 21 and 22. You know, um, if you recall, there was a time when David um, was running away from Saul. Saul wanted to kill him, and um, he ran away, and with his men, he went to the temple, basically, and to look for food. So he went to see Ahimelech and told him he was hungry with his men. And Ahimelech mentioned to him that there was nothing to eat except consecrated bread. And so Ahimelech gave David some of the consecrated bread from the consecrated place. And he and his men ate. The passage continues to talk about David taking the, you know, the sword of Goliath and so on. All right. Now, there was someone there whose name was Doeg. He was not even a Hebrew. And he was not even a Hebrew, but he was described as being one of Saul's chief shepherds, one of his headsmen. Now, Doeg spotted David here and quietly went and betrayed him, reported him to Saul, and said he has seen David. And so they could go get him. Of course, David was not there when they went. But Saul subsequently instructed the guards of Israel to kill not only Ahimelech the priest, but all the priests of Israel. And the guards of Israel flatly defied the king. They refused to murder the Lord's anointed. And this same Doeg the Edomite stepped in and did the job beyond the king's expectation. He killed over 85 priests that day. And one of them managed to escape to report to David. And the one who escaped was um, Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, the priest. And when he escaped and finally found David, he reported the matter to him. And in verse 22 of First Samuel chapter 22, David made these remarks. The verse says, That day when Doeg, uh, the Edomite, saw that Saul was there, I knew, I knew that Doeg, the Edomite, was sure to tell Saul 
This is David's own words. That day when Doeg the Edomite was there, there seeing me taking the bread from Ahimelech, I knew that he would be sure to tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of your whole family. Then in verse 23, David says something that is remarkable, which I ask that we take note of. He says to them, stay with me. Do not be afraid. The man who seeks to kill you is trying to kill me too. You will be safe with me. What a statement. The man who seeks to kill you is trying to kill me too. You will be safe with me. What gave David this kind of confidence to be able to say to a fellow fugitive, stay with me? Now, um, as I said, people like Spurgeon positioned Psalm 27 at this time. And so with this background, let's go back to the 27th Psalm and read verse 1. And hear the context of David speaking these words. He says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This forms the basis of David saying, the man who seeks your life seeks mine also. Stay with me. You will be safe. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Shall I fear even Saul? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When a person has been saved by the Lord, God becomes our joy, our comfort, our guide, our teacher, and in every sense, our light. C.H. Spurgeon in his Treasure of David put it this way, he is light within, he is light around, he is light reflected around us. And his light revealed to us. Note that David didn't say that God just gives us light, but that he is our light. David didn't say that God just gives salvation, but he himself is our salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. And once you understand that, the question follows. Of whom shall I be afraid? And, and this question is its own answer. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's an answer as much as a question. And it also echoes something that we will be told much, much later in Romans 8.31. That what then shall we say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? Who can be against us? So what David is saying way back reflects what will become true of us after we have been delivered. Neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor angels, nor demons, nor heights, nor depth can separate us from the love of God. Who can be against us? Now let's go to verse 3, where he now breaks into praise and communion and abandonment. And declares these words one thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. What did the psalmist mean when he said that one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. At the first reading, at the first Kesri reading, you get the impression that he was actually talking about the temple of the Lord, the physical temple of the Lord. And for a long time, I thought so. But upon a moment's reflection, you realize that the temple did not exist at the time David wrote these words. So he could not have been referring to the temple, the physical temple of the Lord. Indeed, David had wanted to build a temple for the Lord. In 2 Samuel 7 verse 2, he said to Nathan, the prophet, he said, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of the Lord remains in a tent. So David knew that there was no temple of the Lord. The ark of the Lord, which represented the presence of the Lord, was in a tent. So indeed, David did not build the temple. So he could not have been referring to the physical temple. It was much later that his son Solomon would build the temple. But even if David were referring to the tent in which the, prayer, the, the tabernacle was, what was it about the tent that David should so much desire to be in? It wasn't so much about the tent, neither was it so much about the physical structure of a temple or where we are and so on. It was about who that represented. Since we went on lockdown, I have been to LIC a couple of times, you know, more than once, several times, and I come here and the place is entirely empty. And I just think to myself, what are all these things without the church that meets in it, without the people? What are the chairs? What, what is the building? What, what is it without the essence that the people, the, the fellowship, the church that gathers here? Similarly, what is the temple by itself if God is not in it? So if David says, that I seek to dwell in the house. He is not saying he seeks to dwell in brick and mortar. What he's saying is that he seeks to dwell in the presence of the Lord. He seeks to dwell in the presence of the Lord. And what does that mean for us? Now we know that we are the temple of the Lord. And when once we have been saved and God's spirit dwells within us, what would it mean for us to speak these words and what would it mean for us that we are dwelling in the temple of the Lord? It means that we live in the consciousness of the Lord all the time. In our awake days, all the days of my life, not just on Wednesdays where there's midweek, not just on Fridays, not just on Sundays, but every single day. Not five minutes in the morning, not five minutes before I go to bed but that I am with the Lord and he is with me. When I'm in the trotter on my way to work, when I'm in the taxi on my way back, when I'm speaking to my boss, when I'm in school and studying for the exam, when I'm in the lecture hall, the Lord is with me and his consciousness is with me. I am in constant communion with the Lord. 
I can hear the song. I can hear the music. God whispers in every situation that I find myself in that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It is when we arrive at this place where God is with us and we are with the Lord that we have the boldness to be able to say with David, the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Even when things go wrong and things are not the way we plan them to be, even in times of calamity, even in times of COVID-19, we are able to have the confidence that the Lord is my light and my salvation. And he is the stronghold of my life. I pray that as we leave here, as we continue the service and leave into our various activities and work and school and life, family life and so on, that we will keep God always before us, that we will remember that we are in the temple of the Lord, that we will make this a prayer, that I seek most of all to dwell in his temple. Indeed, that in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe. He will set my feet upon a solid rock. May the Lord add his blessing unto this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, we thank you for the reminder that above all things, above every one of the things that consume our thoughts, emotions, and actions, Lord, you ought to be there as number one. We pray, O oh God, and ask that you teach us to seek your face early in the morning, noon, day, night, Monday to Monday, and all our days, that we will continually dwell in your presence. For when we have, we will find the strength and the confidence to say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we please rise as we bring songs of praise and adoration to the Lord of our salvation. Sing to God. Sing praise to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Clap your hands and shout for joy to the God of our salvation. Amen. God is good all the time. We want to celebrate him, the God of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Shout for joy to the Shout for joy!
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we receive the benediction? Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Christ our Savior. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you now and always. Amen. The Lord be with you.
gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward. 